Today we are celebrating uh, not one but four uh, marine plans and not one but 18 First Nations that are part of the MAP process. We must uh, turn our attention to building the implementation plans necessary to put all of this hard work uh, that's gone into the planning process and these four plans today uh, put all of that into practice. We really see our role as um, facilitating and, and enabling Canada to fulfill its, um, its trade objectives and to keep the trading economy going. And uh, Prince Rupert is being looked to as the solution. We haven't looked at the whole uh, matter of coastal protection as it relates to uh, marine vessels whether it's the marine vessel casualty, the ability of all vessels and not just the oil spills, as well as chronic impacts or operational impacts from noise, sound, and emissions and invasive species. Today we're, we're fighting to leave something behind for our, our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and we're fighting so that they have a sense of who they are and where they come from and we're fighting to keep our traditions and our culture and our language and our songs and dances alive. The idea of integrated uh, planning really comes from um, the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea, which was uh, ratified in 1994. And the Canadian government's you know, response was our Oceans Act uh, that set out uh, and, and tasked the Department of Fisheries and Oceans to take that leadership role and develop integrated plans for, for sustainable development on our coast uh, to protect the, the ecosystem. So they have a mandate to lead that um, and they really need to step up. So we hope to get this plan in place to use that again as a platform to start some high-level government-to-government discussions where we can talk about fishing management, where we can talk about protected areas, we can talk about tanker traffic, and we can talk about all the various user groups that they want to use in our territories. We've got to strike this balance, and it's very difficult. You know, we have to be profit-oriented, but at the same time, we have to consider our environment. And the value of that environment is part of our balance sheet. So we know that if we can get our ecosystems back in balance and make sure that we don't pollute the water, if we can get that balance back, the natural capital that exists in that region will begin to bear fruit for us again. That's the objective that we have on the terrestrial side. That's the objective that we have on the marine side. Our society has maybe lost its connection with place. And so this is a way of reestablishing local communities and their um, their say in what happens to their place. I think it's an important step in terms of how we work together with First Nations in partnership and how we think about building a, a prosperous future uh, that is a healthy future that is respectful of both the environment and the economy and all the things that are important that we've, we value.